me in and in today's video we're going to review this yes it's Halloween ends from 2022 and well this was a controversial film apparently amongst a lot of people I mean I've never seen so much fuss and hate even you know for a film i thought bloody heck what's going on here well i i'm now going to reveal my thoughts on this film i've got the 4k copy and i'm going to tell you what i think of it and why perhaps a lot of people just didn't get it right at all in their assessment of this film Yes, I'm going to say there may be problems with the film, but are the problems as big as people make out? Are the understanding of this film just totally, well, wrong? Because I think things got rather hoped overhyped. Yes, overhyped. And I'm going to look at this film, I hope. Um, you can look at it two ways. You can see it as part of the trilogy. The trilogy being um, Halloween 2018, then Halloween Kills, and then this, Halloween Ends. And um, you can look at this film separately. If you, uh, I think we'll, we'll assess it on both terms, really, I think, yeah. We're going to look at it yeah, like that. Now, I know I'm not going to change people's um, ideas and viewpoints because I, th this is how f people get. But I honestly think when you start hating films, it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? How can you hate something like this? It's a film. It's a work of art. And okay, people put a lot of work into it and people... Um, just um deserve some you know uh, i think respect for doing that and making all these like look if you don't like a film move on don't go over the top about it just move on you know it's simple really people just don't get it do they anyhow that's just my viewpoint i might get shot for it but hey it's just me. I'm, I'm trying to be positive. And why shouldn't we be more positive about things? I think we should be positive, and why not? Anyhow, this film is directed, once again, by David Gordon Green, who also co-writes with uh, Danny McBride. Um, they all have been involved in this trilogy. and And I think that... That gives them an important part to, you know, they knew the direction um, and then it, it it was going to take and what these films were essentially going to be about. And they talk, um, you know, if you actually follow some of the extras on here, they talk about that sort of viewpoint. And that gives a, a better understanding, again, of this film. Um... And I think that's quite important. Uh, just a, a few other things about this film. It's 111 minutes long. I think that's fine. That's not, it doesn't overstay his welcome at all. I, I rather uh, think um, it's perfect for that. You know, I, I, I loved it. In fact, I was hoping for a bit more even. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, we've got this. And we have, there are some extended deleted scenes as well on here, which are interesting, which I find, uh, yeah, add, I think, to the enjoyment as well. Um, now, on Rotten Tomatoes, I thought it was going to be absolutely awful. 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it wasn't 
it, you know, it wasn't the total savage attack which you expected from the critics. In fact, one or two critics actually saw through all the hysteria and judged the film for what it is. And and that I like that. It shows something. Um, and don't forget, not all the fans of these uh, films are uh, always as vocal as the haters. So always remember that as well. That's why I, I just often ignore a lot of the haters sometimes because, yeah, exactly. Um, now, I, I think in terms of box office, they were disappointed, I think. Though it still made, it made money still. $33 million budget and they made $105 million. And of course, they'll be making more money with the physical releases. Um, I think also the fact that it was um, the streaming service, Peacock, um, also maybe took away some of the uh, box office returns as well. And um, that's all. Don't forget, again, um, the effects of the pandemic are still going on. As we know, even in the production of this film, pandemic played a part as well um so um that's just just another aspect to look at um if we look at the cast of course we've got jamie lee curtis as laurie again returning now i got the impression by a lot of people that she was hardly in this film that's what that's the, some of the impression you seem to get well she's very much part of this film Yes, she is part of this film. She may, some people would say she's not the centre of the film, but I think she, from her point, it, it, she does um, have a major influence on this film and its development. Um, you know, um, and she's brilliant again. Absolutely, I absolutely love... She's well on board with this and, and acting well... You know, she does. She always gives a good performance. So I think that's important to say. And then um, Andy Matika plays Alison, a granddaughter. Great, again, performance. You know, you can't argue with these performances. Wonderful performance. And then the controversial one, as they say, uh, Rowan Campbell. He plays Corey Cunningham. A new character introduced. But there is a certain logic in all this, which I think people perhaps have overshadowed and got all upset about. And uh, he, his performance is great. I love the way you see him at first and what happens in the opening scenes. Um, in, in a way, a throwback with babysitting to the um, first original film. Um, it's that is really good. His performance is good because it, it, it's a, like a descent into a psychopath, if you want to put it in that way. And I, I, it's a great performance. Absolutely love it. I think he he should be congratulated again. People, you know, just haven't seen that, and they should look at that. Um, and of course, <clears throat> James. Jude Courtney playing Michael Myers or as they call it The Shape again in all the three films. Again, you know, I got the impression the way uh, some of the things I read that they, it, it was all saying oh, like Michael Myers is uh, it's is at the end of the film in the final confrontation and that's it. You almost got the impression it wasn't he hardly involved at all in the in the rest of the film before this, huh? Uh, have you watched the film? Yes, he's not in it a great deal, but his influence is there, and he's that's the point. His influence is very much there, and he is there. We've seen. I mean, for goodness sake, you know what are people? Um, they it's like they just didn't understand. Um, 
And I thought it worked well. That's the whole point of it all in many ways. The influence, the evil, and the way the Cory character is in fact infected, you could say, by um, uh, Michael Myers. Yes, infected. And of course, this is the point that Laurie is now. She's trying to get on with her life. She's writing her memoirs, living there in a the community. She thinks and she's hoping that she has actually moved on. But then Laurie sees this evil. I think at first she doesn't quite um, almost think, oh no, it can't be happening. But then she sees it. She sees the infection and she knows in fact there is something there around that Michael Myers hasn't gone and disappeared at all that his presence is still around and she sees there's some wonderful scenes there's a scene where she looks out of the window and she sees Corey standing there and you can see that reminiscence almost back um, uh, to you know seeing Michael Myers and then when she looks in his eyes as she says she sees Michael Myers this is also wonderfully done and then of course fundamentally this is interesting because what the director is saying is that it's actually this is a love story because we get the love story between Corey and um, Alison and how that dynamic affects um, Laurie and and that love between her and her granddaughter um, is also important. So that is an important thing, and it's it's Laurie. Ultimately, a struggle is because of how she's been feeling, how. She's trying so desperately to put all this and live a normal life again. Laugh, joke and enjoy life. In the end, this film is, as it say, ends. She comes to the conclusion, quite rightly, that this evil hasn't gone away. And ultimately we get the confrontation. Now I know some people said, well, it's not very... Uh, a uh, dramatic ending. Um, it's inevitable, yes. You can see the inevitability of it. But I, I think it's very good. And when you look, actually, um, like when the, I was looking at the extras and the actual see, uh, scenes and why it's done and how it's done and the performance of, Jenny, of um, Jamie Lee Curtis um, is really good you know, where they choreographed the ending and everything about it. I think it works well. And then, of course, they were... They wondered, I think, in many ways, how they would actually end this film. Um, they did some internal test screens as well. It was a question, were we going to have uh, a more optimistic ending or were we going to have a dark ending? And I'm glad they chose the optimistic ending because also it hopefully, and it ends this trilogy. I'm not, and hopefully, and Jamie Lee Curtis has said the same thing, but of course, you know, you can hear people say, ah, but they'll come up with uh, another one and another one. The intention there is that this is the last, and I hope it is. I hope this is the last say. We don't need any more remakes. This at all. But, you know, um, we know how things go. But, um, so I'm a, I thought the ending, I looked at it and thought about it, and I think the audience must have the reaction um, when they did some of these teens crashes because they did some reshoots of that ending and um yeah I, I i like that i like that um the it kind of brought for laurie uh struggles um it 
bright or good conclusion, I think. And of course, uh, that is a good thing, I think. You know, it's, it's the old good triumphing over evil. It's triumphant, yes. It's, it's, it's won through all the evil which is infected everywhere. Like, have you noticed the sort of virus um, pandemic kind of uh, things there? Actually, it'd be interesting in a few years, we'll look back and see some of the films of this uh, time. I may think, yeah, the pandemic did have an influence on people's views and ideas. But that was an interesting viewpoint. But I love that, that, um, that there was the triumph of um, good over evil. I do like dark endings. I do enjoy a good dark ending sometimes. And but I think from all the films we've seen in the whole Halloween um, franchise, then this uh, is a good way to end it. And as I said, the heart. Of this film was to be a love story. Now I know the stacking still here, all the complaints and shouts, but this is just my opinion. And as you can gather, I actually enjoyed this film. I really enjoyed it. Yes, and I went in. Yeah, I thought well maybe some of the um, things they were saying were right maybe I don't know but I'm always positive and I felt I always go by my own instincts as I've said I in my collection I my instinctively I thought I think I will actually enjoy this and uh, I go a lot by my instincts and they tend to be right how I feel about something um and uh yeah uh this is enjoyable. In fact, in many ways, I think it is actually better than Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills had a few problems that were there, I think, that stood out actually perhaps a bit more than this. I think Halloween Kills perhaps also was, it just seemed a, it needed a more um sharper editing perhaps in terms of the of the length of the film I think maybe was a bit of a but I still found it enjoyable I, I found them all I mean and people say the first one was the best the first one was an excellent start but looking now at everything I think this is fine and why and why you know it's just so much criticism of it you know I think yeah it's fine you don't like it well that's it but I I love it and I'm really really happy with it um, yeah um, the other great thing is this in 4k transfer fantastic really good and something which I wish they would do more of is um Please, can we have more extras on the 4K disc? Because often they shove them on the blooming Blu-ray disc. And this has got um, lots of extras on the 4K disc. And I would say anybody who is a bit worried, um, then you yeah, enjoy the film and then... Watch the, watch the extras. The extras even add more to your enjoyment of the film because you you understand more about what this film, what they were trying to do. And I really like that, appreciated that a lot, you know, on this disc. And uh, I think that was good. You know, instead of having this initial sort of reaction, it's like, oh, I'm not going to blah, blah, blah. This... This really um, just it really helps the understanding, and it's all part of the enjoyment for me. Extras are, I wish they'd do more extras on the streaming. To be honest, because if you love film, then it is, that's why physical media, yes, must remain because the extras are just as enjoyable as anything. Anyhow, that's my opinion. I rate it. Definitely enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy watching it again. 
And again, <laughs> and, um, yes, that's it. So, all I've got to say, as usual, is if you've enjoyed the reviews and what I put up on this um, channel, give it a subscribe, you know, because then we let you know when we produce these videos. And then, if you really like it, then, well, give it a like. It helps more people see it then. That's what I say, anyhow. And it costs note. So, hey, that's good, isn't it? It costs note. Hey, <laughs> read. So, all I've got to say is, I'll see thee, and I'll see thee again. <laughs>